Hello, it's Professor Green here, and as promised, I'm sending you this video and these resources which I've introduced you to a while back, but I want to make it post them here in our announcements to make them easy to access. So I know that you and I have been traveling to start off this term, but I want to make sure that we as we get going here, um, that you know that we're on track. It's not a big deal to start a week later. That's fine. Um, we're gonna have time to get this done. And remember, the most important thing, all that counts, is that you submit um, your best work. So we're not gonna submit if you we don't you and I don't feel like this is your absolute best work, um, and that will come towards the end of the term. But let me introduce you to some rubrics. So. I mentioned the website, and you, it was funny you said you were stocking this website. I love that. That's great because I created it a long time ago, and, and um, you know it's worked out fairly well for us. But a great place to start is after you log in, um, go to the student candidate information. And if you scroll down, there's a video that I created um, for you to take a look at. But then also, you'll see a lot of the... Um, forms that you need like your site information um, the the primary and this is important the primary instructional design template we're not using the design template um, or lesson plan template that you used in the past that really long one but the reason we used that in the past was to prepare you for the edtpa because a lot of the writing that you're going to do is very similar to what's on that pre-primary template but you're going to be happy to say let me just download it here um, you're going to be happy to see that it's much more compact and precise. And whenever you download it, everything in blue are just notes and ideas. You can delete those whenever you add your own. Um, but as you can see, it's much more streamlined. And the reason for that is because, you know, um, such a, things such as the um, standards, the objectives, vocabulary, um, are the most important things in, in a lesson with an assess with procedures and an assessment. So that's what we're going to do. But again, the other longer lesson plan template was implemented for a purpose to get used to what, what's upcoming for this ed TPA. So the other document that you can get started with is, um, the making good choices. It looks like this. Um, and I believe this is the latest version. I'll have to double check that. It changes every once in a while. It's 2017, 2018. But um, as you'll see, there are three tasks to the EdTPA, planning instruction and for instruction and assessment, instructing and engaging students in learning, and assessing student learning. Notoriously, the assessment part, or task three, is where Kendall students have um, struggled a little bit in the past. Not, um, you know, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Not that you may be completely opposite, but that I just wanted you to know that that was... Um, an area of concern and I didn't think it was going to do that so let me scroll back up here um, all right so how do I get started with my ed TPA and the I'm sorry and the reason that I mentioned those three tasks um, are because there are 15 rubrics five rubrics for task one five rubrics for task two and five rubrics for task three I'm gonna go into that what that means in a minute but I just wanted you to know you can probably hear the um, police car in the background I'm here in London still so that's what that is um, but anyway so you can go through this document I'm not gonna read it to you that's up to you to do but it gives you a breakdown of organizing and how you get started I mean time management is critical um, when I'm faced with a huge task where this is this is one of them um, ed TPA is difficult but it's definitely doable we've had a really great success record um, you know, in two years, I taught the course that we had a hundred percent pass rate. So we want to keep that going, and I'm letting you know that because um, it's completely doable. But if you work steadily and regularly, giving yourself time every day to contribute something to your ed TPA tasks, you're going to really thank yourself later. And um, and what else? So there's quite a lot, um, but it goes through what you have to submit, and this document's great to help you like get get started because your context for learning is the first thing you're going to do so you're going to want to learn about that the context for learning and um, students with specific learning needs and so now that takes me to what I mentioned earlier the rubrics it's called this document is called understanding rubric level progressions I'm not going to lie to you it's pretty boring reading but it's critical because as you know, rubrics are tools that teachers use to grade students. So it says, if you have A, B, and C, 
in this paper, you are going to get an A. If you have A and B and not C in this paper, you're going to get a B. Or, but for this, these rubrics, they score them from um, 5 to 1. So what I tell students, this is rubric 1. It's planning rubric 1, planning for the whole child. It tells you what it is. Um, and then also some key concepts. And then th don't let the language trip you up. Like there's multimodal. That means what that simply refers to is a full range of domains that impact child's development and thinking, cognitive, social, emotional, and physical. So you're going to want to um, create learning experiences, lesson plans that take all of that into consideration. So as you go through the EdTPA, each week you're gonna, you may come across some terms. I suggest you go to this document to figure out what they are. Um, okay, and... Where students and I have used these documents in the past that has worked, we start at a level three. Because if you score at a level three, that'll get you where you need to be. And um, we don't want to go below that. So everything starts at level three. So whenever you start doing um, task one, which is prompt one A through D, your, your goal is to start at a three. And once you have a three, don't even look at the two or below a two. You go to... All right, well, now how can I make this above a three? And then this document tells you what makes, um, what distinguishes a, a level three from a level four, and then ultimately try and get that, that, that highest level that you possibly can. So, let me see. Uh, level five, I should say. So, yeah, this document, I've created videos for each of these. Again, not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's proved useful for students. It's not something you watch for um, all at once, but they're, they're definitely um, things that you can view over time and when you need it, much like using a, um, an encyclopedia at a library. Use it when you need it. It's not something you just sit down and read cover to cover. So I, I look forward to getting back to the state soon and you and I working. If you wouldn't mind sending me an email letting me know kind of what, what's going on this week, where you are in terms of meeting with your your um, cooperating teacher, your host teacher, all that sort of thing. Keep me in the loop. And again, this is how, back to the website, this is where you and I will communicate a lot of times and it's most essentially your host teacher. And they'll just put their name in, green, um, email, okay, Neil Green at Kendall. And then they pick a file to upload, um, upload the Making Good Choices document, submit and then it's in our system. So if there are evaluations from your, which there are from your um, um, supervisor, they're gonna submit it through this site. And your host teacher also does a weekly observation in weeks two through eight, and they'll be that'll be submitted through the site as well. So make sure you introduce it to him or her, talk about it a little bit, and also remind your supervisor that to explain the site to um, your host teacher. So I think you're gonna do great. Just communicate with me. Um, I know we've been, you and I have been traveling around the world to get this quarter started, but um, you know it's an intense writing. Um, it's not creative writing. Remember that it's academic writing. So everything you write, think in terms of what evidence do I have that can prove or substantiate what I say. So that means going back to textbooks um, that you've used in the past. Hopefully, you have some from from the. Um, from your program and you can go back to those those are great sources um, to go back to but you always have to think in terms of evidence consider yourself like you're writing like a lawyer so you would write in a way that um, explains what you're thinking to your 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 um, audience and making sure that you provide enough of um, feedback to to hold up your claims um, and also this site has a much more information like these are the suggested activities, and I am very flexible with this. It tells you week by week, but depending, this is so dependent on the student. I don't want you to wait. If you're ready to start um, leading whole class, whole class, whole class activities in week two, go for it. Don't wait till week three. That's a discussion between you and your supervisor and your host teacher. I want you to get as much as you possibly can out of this, and not feel like you have to follow this weekly plan day by day. Um, the most important thing is that you do get three full weeks of teaching, and, and that's crucial. And then remember, I know this is high stress, that TPA that is, but um, remember these are children, and I want you to have fun working with them. 
um, you know, and don't lose sight of that, that they're, they're kids and they don't really know what this TPA thing is. So enjoy yourself. Don't forget that. Okay. Have a good one.